Recording started. Talk she. Recorded live. Good morning, good evening, wherever it may be across the nation or around the world. Once again, you are listening to the VMware Communities Roundtable podcast. This is podcast number 552. My name is Eric Nelson, and with me today, I have a special co host, Tony Foster or Mr. Wonder Nerd. <laughs> today is April 21st, 2021. Tony, how are you doing? I'm doing simply wonderful, Eric. Heavy on the simple. Oh, very good. Very good. And I got to ask you, how is the weather in Kansas City? Do we have a Kansas City, Kansas River report? So so we do have a uh, Kansas River report. Kansas City, from what I hear, is doing just fine. I'm a few hours away from Kansas City. Um, the Kansas River right now is sort of a muddy green Um We've had a bunch of rain here this past week, and it's uh, stirring up some of the sediment in the river. So, all right, there you go. Well, on the show today, we're going to be talking uh, to Varghese Filipposi, I guess. We'll hear what his yes. name is. I'll try to not mangle it too bad. <laughs> He's going to be telling us about V-Realize Operations uh, upgrades. And uh, they've done a nice blog series. If you happen to know his blog, his uh, blog has been covering uh, V-Realize Operation <laughs> Upgrade, I think all the way from 8.1 to 8.2 to 8.3 to 8.4. So, uh, Varghese, um, welcome to the show. Uh, you can say hello, and then we'll get to you after we do the news hello all hello hello eric hello tony thank you thank you for having me here and we do have to do a shout out to your blog if you happen to be listening to this thank and you, you want to go check out his blog while we're talking about the articles the blog is think virtuals think v-i-r-t-u-a-l-s dot com so we're going to be talking about that blog great blog by the way uh Varghese. so um, thank you Yep, we'll be talking about that and some of the other things that you got. And I think you guys have multiple bloggers, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but to get to the news, uh, the news is uh, Corey Romero is on vacation this week. Uh, we let him off the hook every once in a while, so I don't have any VExpert news. But we do have VMworld news happening. So if you have been in a corner and haven't been listening, Call for Papers is open. The official date for close is May 14th, 2021. So uh, we still have uh, about three weeks left on that, maybe three and a half weeks left to get your papers submitted. And uh, they will be closing May 14th. Sometimes they extend that. So be, uh, be aware. But uh, right now, the closing date is May 14th. They are going to be announcing notifications of speakers on June 21st. So, and then, of course, VMworld is October 5th through the 7th. It is going to be online again, um, but we are working on a better online experience. Uh, community engagement uh, will not cost money this year, uh, not like last year where we had, you know, some of the special things required uh, money. They're also talking about a Slack integration for real-time chat. So uh, I'm thinking that the online experience should be better than it was last year, as good as any kind of, uh, you know, what uh 48 hour zooming experience can possibly be so tony what do you think about that I, i'm actually looking forward to it uh last year was pretty good so if all the stuff that i keep hearing about happens this should actually be a really great conference to attend this year so really looking forward to that I'm looking forward to the Oculus Rift integration where I can put on a headset and then, you know, look at everybody walking around and that would, that would be kind of fun. That would be awesome. Could, yeah. could, could you, could you work with the, uh, um, event team and see if they can do that for us? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to be all over that. I would say one caution though. Um, my, I got a, uh, 8k television, right. And the coolest thing about 8k televisions is like, you can watch all the Disney rides, uh, in, in 8k and it's in a 75 inch 8k. So it's almost like you're sitting in the ride. Right. And one thing I forgot is that, uh, when you're putting on these virtual headsets or you have an 8k 75 inch TV, you know, you know, four feet in front of you on your beanbag chair it makes you sick. <laughs> like moving around, running on these rides when your body isn't moving, but your head's thinking it's moving. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, that's it for the news. The only news I have uh, right now is obviously that uh, VMworld Call for Papers going on. And, and with that, we'll get to our main topic. So, Varghese, uh, welcome to the show. We always start out because we are a community podcast. Why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, how you ended up in the VMware ecosystem. And, you know, you're on the community show, so you're kind of a community member and you are a blogger. So, 
welcome. Thank you, thank you, Eric. Uh, before introducing myself, like I just want to tell Sharad something. Like when I joined VMware like nine years back, uh, and I was handling so many customers across this region. We were new in this region, and then a lot of learnings had to be happened because I was new to VMware products as well. So how learnings, announcements, how do you get to that, right? So my colleague at that time, who apparently is my manager now. He suggested me this community uh, podcast, right? And then this was my uh, learning thing, right? So every morning when I drive drive to work, that that was a long way at that time, peak traffic times. So 40, 40 minutes, one hour. I used to hear this, right, repeatedly so that I get uh, used to or I get updated on whatever announcement. So thanks for this. Thanks for doing this for the community. This is a great what? thing. That's awesome. Thanks for listening. Um, you've probably uh, listened back, maybe even in the John Troyer days as well. Yes, exactly. Ever. Exactly. Yeah, right. We've been going for a long time. So yeah, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, uh, great yeah. to have people listening. So starting with my myself, introducing myself. So my name is Vergis Philippos. I'm currently staff technical account manager, part of the uh, customer success stamp team based in Dubai. Uh, if I if I talk about my career, like the uh, have got like almost 22 plus experience in the uh, IT industry, and of those, like almost the last 20 years had been closely related to virtualization. So starting with uh, as a pre-sales engineer, I was working for a thin client company called VXL Instruments way back in 2000 2001, and that was they were like number three in the world for thin clients, and then. Of course, thin clients cannot work without virtualization, right? So Citrix mm -hmm. and way back the Citrix, MetaFrame, XP, and all of those old times, right? So then, uh, then I got an opportunity to move to Dubai, wherein I was dedicatedly working with Citrix and Citrix partners. So that was when I started working on with the Citrix, MetaFrame, uh, then presentation server till till like ZenApp server. I was closely working on that, and then I moved into uh, Trend Micro. That's where I became a technical account manager. But then again, even there, uh, I was uh, closely working with Trend Micro Deep Security, which was basically the agentless AV for the vSphere platform. So all through those things, and I was closely on that virtualization. And then finally, I got in here, like in 2000, like it's, I'm completing uh, nine years in a uh, couple of months now, nine years within VMware. So had been a time here. Uh, I'd managed, uh, I'd been assigned uh, the TAM uh, for uh, customers across UAE, uh, Saudi, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Oman, all, all in the Middle East. So we are part of the Metna, Middle East, Turkey, and North Africa. So uh, that's it. And then from, uh, four years back, I got into, I was elected to be part of uh, the CTO ambassador program as well. So within CTO ambassador program, currently I co-lead an uh, initiative within the Octo office, which is sustainability enablement data sheet. So that's one thing. And plus, I'm a specialist on uh, VROps. I'm part of the VROps ambassador program since uh, 2020, this year as well. Uh, I'm a V expert for like three years. Uh, last year onwards, I had been V expert for cloud management portal, cloud management as well. And this year, I'm elected to be the V expert pro as well. So that's 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 a little thing on me. You've had the whole journey. I gotta say that's a that's a classic journey, and you've been along for the ride as as long as all of us have. So uh, it's it is interesting to watch VMware mature, right? And uh, yes. and the community programs and the offerings, the CTO ambassador program, that maturity, just all the programs are maturing, right? So you've you've, you've exactly. experienced that. Um, when did you start to blog? Uh, okay, so uh, I had been I started blogging uh, seriously as, within this uh, thing virtuals because it was basically like uh, two of my colleagues. Uh, one of my uh, colleague who is working with me in the TAM team, Rahul, as well as another uh, uh, who's working with a partner. They they started uh, uh, plan uh, came up with a plan of blogging and then. I definitely, I never had a time really to sit down and then build this thing, right? I used to create a lot of documents and all, but then never to blog on things. But then when they started opening up and they started blogging, then yeah, I thought like, why can't I do as well? Because I do quite a lot of documentation for the customers and all. So why can't I publish it out so that it can be useful to the others as well? So that's where 
we came in together i also joined hands with them and then started doing that apart from that i had i had done my blogs within the cmbu portal as cmbu blog post as well uh for the sustainability dashboards as well as for the super metrics my top 15 super metrics as well so i had been blogging i can say seriously blogging for the last two years that's it right Okay, and uh, your guys, maybe we should do a shout out to the other people that uh, also work on the blog. Again, the blog is thinkvirtuals.com. Go check it out and take a look at it. So, uh, who are those these other guys that are working on it? Okay, so uh, one of the person is Rahul Ramakrishnan. He is a TAM within same within my team itself, and then uh, we have Harish Nair, who is working for a partner, uh, VMware partner. and he he basically looks at the horizon uh, uh rv networks and nsx blocks topics and all uh rahul looks at uh, verni what uh, we realize network inside nsx part and all of those thing and i do purely the we realize operations part that's how we uh, distributed and we keep doing it uh, sequentially so that it is always we always have a new new blog coming in there rather than having a long gap of no updates in the blog right so that yeah. that that's the that's the biggest advantage having multiple people in there yeah that's what we have seen i think this year when we've been you know trying to loop through podcasters and bro, uh, bloggers just to get you know more community people on that are writing content and what i've seen is for the maybe the last year we've had two or three people in that have been on a multi person blog now right like so for a lot of years it was individuals you know the william lambs duncan ampings these guys are you know big rock stars uh, yes. but then you know for the mere mortal right um being able to blog enough to make your blog successful it's just it's like a heavy lift and this idea of getting a couple of your buddies together and then blogging on topics like so that, that you have like a handful that's actually a really a neat idea one because you get a more cadence of blogs coming out but two you get to write articles with your friends do they ever review any of your content and give you feedback or or is, are you kind of lone on your own and then everybody just publishes yeah initially we used to uh, i used to uh, give my blogs into the uh, because mine was cmbu based so i used to uh, share it with the cmbu uh, specialists and then they used to review the content and then is to publish now and uh, i have to give a shout out to ivan rabu who is the uh, all know him as ivan as the guru for we realize operation so he had been my mentor since since i started off working with vr up so he always used to review my uh, we realize operation blogs and then now it's basically like yeah it is a sequence right so yeah uh, the great support from him and then he used to review my blogs on that nice 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 well certainly rewarding for the community i got to say that yes so, uh getting on to v realize operations um you have had this series and i i did go look at your blog and look at it. it's really nice because you just come into the blog and then select the the tab and there are the nice articles in sequence because not everybody stays up to date on all the the releases at all times so so there's always this what version am i going to go to so you can actually just go there and and look at uh your articles to talk about how to get from version to version. So um you did 8.1 what's the cadence of uh we re realize operations upgrade it seems like it's looking like it's every every 3 or 4 months by the by the look of your articles. So the release is basically every 6 months. Every 6 months for the on prem version. So so now we have 8.4 which was released now. 8.3 was a uh, release which happened in between so that was out of out of cycle probably I would, I would say but then usually it is every 6 months we have a release so that's that's how the cadence goes in and uh why i i tell my customers you don't need to like when a release when a new version comes in you don't need to wait for uh like the next release to come in to go for a n minus 1 release because that's where when you go into the new release comes in for a specific reason either there is a fix or there are a lot of features in there so why don't you go in and grab that right so we we take care of the, uh, uh, the product itself and then you go in and update that's where i keep all my customers all our customers and within the tam community upgraded and keep them all updated so that they get the best out of their product get the maximum value of the product what they pay for right 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 uh so i like i like your article very graphic uh i like the little zoom in and out on your blog that's kind of cool when you mouse over what are you blogging on are you blogging on wordpress 
Yes, it's a WordPress. That's a nice little feature. So let's talk about your blog. So you have uh, you know, under Cloud Management tab, you have 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4. I guess we'll just go to 8.4. Uh, what do you need to know? I wanted to take people through. What do you need to know about a, the, this release process? And there are, are there any specific things that you want to call out on the 8.4 upgrade? We can look at the blog. Yeah, so uh, anyone anyone who wants to go to upgrade, the first thing I, what I tell my customers or anyone is basically like, what are you looking at? Look at what is new in there, right? So, and what do you get out of that? So rather than just going with upgrades, what, what are the features available and what do you get out of that, right? So that's, that makes the uh, quick return from whatever you are uh, taking time on upgrade and all. And then most common mistake, so, uh, I, as part of a program called uh, within the TAM community, we uh, I lead a program for, for improve VR ops adoption within the TAM customer. Yeah. Okay, so I had been involved with TAM customers for V realize operation upgrade for like from 6.7 onwards. So I have seen like hundreds of upgrade customers and what are the issues we have seen, what are the, uh, the, uh, the, the steps which could fail or where the customers could make mistake at all, right? So that's where I have uh documented this we have upgrade guides all the, the documentation available with within the vmware portal but then this is something which i have consolidated from multiple steps and learnings learnings from whatever we have done so most important thing what i tell my uh, anyone who wants to go to upgrade is basically you need to have a clean snapshot of the product right clean snapshot of the appliances because uh, the, when, when I say clean, it is just not right click and snapshot because this is uh, the cluster, uh, VROps cluster uh, runs on an in memory database. So you need to take the cluster offline and then do the snapshot. This is very, 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 very important because if you fail in between the upgrades, the only way is to revert back. Revert back, you need to have a clean snapshot. Clean snapshot means you need to have a which is which which has been taken when the cluster is offline. This is the most important mistake everyone does, right? So because uh, the upgrade could fail or upgrade could stop, there could be a lot of uh, environmental factors which could impact the upgrade, right? The product upgrade is uh, seamless, but then they, uh, there are a lot of parameters who could impact. So that's where you need to always have a rollback plan. That's where that makes it. Uh, that uh, that will give you more confidence on going in into the upgrade. So that's that's the most important thing I will tell everyone. And then make sure uh, if if you are running a if you are upgrading on a production environment, make sure that like during the upgrade process there will be uh, no metrics will be collected. So you need to make sure that if you are uh, working on a live environment and where the data is being monitored, there is a knock environment where the uh, the people are monitoring. Make sure that like yeah you inform that this is data is not collected during this period and you the up, until the upgrade is completed so right. i think that's that's the most important thing i will say yep sorry yeah so a couple couple thoughts um one is when you're doing that snapshot does it tell you you're not doing clean do you get some kind of notification that you have your cluster still mounted and it's going to have a problem or does it just let you do it no, not really, because the snapshot is the vSphere feature. So it will just do the snapshot of the virtual machine, right? So it will just straight away do that. It will ask you whether you want to take the memory memory squeeze data a snapshot or no. So if you take no, that means even if uh, you are taking the snapshot, the adapters are running, metrics are being collected, database is getting working on, and that is getting missed in the snapshot. And once you bring that revert to that snapshot, which, which is... In inconsistent, the database will really become inconsistent, and there are chances that uh, you you will get into problem. Right, right, right. That's it. I've never ever had that kind of problem myself. I've always been perfect on my upgrades. I never have to revert back. I never have any problems like that. No, I'm perfect. Yep. I, I'm yeah. so happy for you. I've been there. <laughs> uh, I've never been perfect. So yes. Right. That, that's why I ask what the common failures are, right? So from a planning perspective, I notice in your blog, you do have the new feature list that are there, some of the big features for 8.4. Um, when I'm, if I'm sitting at 8.1, can I jump to 8.4? Do you cover like, how do I go from 8.3 to 4? Or, or can I go to 8.0 to 8.4? What's the process by which I can feel comfortable that I can get to 8.4? You can, you can upgrade straight to 8.4 from 7.0 onwards. 
Okay. That's, uh, so it is. It is the only difference is from 7.5 to 8.0, uh, the, cha the, uh, the change in the operating system happens. So there is a there is a major. That's a major upgrade. So but then you can straight away go into 8.4. So if you are on 7.5, you are having the appliance on SUSE Linux. And then when you move into upgrade to 8.x, whatever version, it will be Photon OS. But then that's seamless. You don't need to, uh, the customers don't need to worry about anything out there. That is being taken care completely seamlessly by engineering team. Amazing work they have done on that upgrade part. All right, I'm looking at the amazing list. Like the first one, of course, is a security vulnerability fix. I hate those things because I get no no features. I'm just more secure. And the security people are always just yelling at me, telling me I, I have to upgrade at all times. Uh, but then you do have some other features. Um, that, since you're a TAM and you've been working, are there any ones that uh, are favored for your customers you want to shout out here? Automation Central. That's that's the, that's the next number after two. the security fix. Yeah, right. number two. Exactly. I always want to put that as number one, but the number one was always security vulnerable because that was a major thing which was announced recently. So say automation central. This has always been an ask from all the VROps customers who have adopted the product, right? So mainly, uh, for example, you 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 have you the VROps can give you. Uh, alert on like if a snapshot is there for more than seven days or something and then what will you do is you can just go in and delete that snapshot right so we could do automate a sort of those thing but then uh, now what is possible here in automation central is that we can schedule these tasks we can schedule these tasks to happen during the off-peak hours at the night time or whatever time so and then yeah even the right sizing of the vms if a vm need to be uh, increased on resources or cut down on the uh, resources from the oversized PM, we can schedule that task, which is which is which has been a big ask from the customers uh, earlier on. Nice, nice. I see that number two. Yep, that's good. Scheduling and rec reclamation and right sizing tasks. Right. Okay. Yep. Yep. So that that in itself is worth it because you get that feature. I noticed some other um, cloud VMware cloud on AWS costing. So a little bit of some new features there. It seems like you know we have we have some of the product managers on uh, every once in a while, and they're like, "Look, we're just in, we're just doing you know just in time development. We're we're pushing releases out, and this does look like this isn't just like a dot release. There's actual real features." here a lot of in the old days you know if there were a package you know when we were doing releases these dot releases were just usually fixes there weren't a lot of new functionality in the dot releases that has definitely changed as as we've moved along and i can see that that we're actually putting in new features uh in this list i'm looking at the top 10 here or i think 11 these look like at least half or more are actual features that are going into the product Exactly. And it's just not on 8.4. We have seen this coming up in all the releases in the previous releases as well. So uh, hats off to the product team, engineering team who had been doing a great work on uh, b bringing these features, all these features which the customers had been asking about and then rolling it out into the product. Now, you're a TAM and you help your customers do this, right? That's part of your job. Do you ever get any customer frustration with regard to like, I have to upgrade, I have to upgrade, I have to upgrade, I have to upgrade. Um, and if I have like 15 products, I have to upgrade them all. Um, or are they generally acceptance of the fact that, hey, these are new features, maybe I won't get to them. I know that uh, when I ran a data center, I, I never was able to keep up with all the features, right? There might be one in here that we really want. So what's your sense of working with customers? Uh, are they getting onto this cadence and are they happy with the cadence? Yeah, I, I have to tell uh, a history of that because uh, when, I, when we were in VROP 6.7 and when we were asking to upgrade, uh, asking customers to upgrade, okay, so every six months that was a pain for them, right? So, but then what we have seen is, right, we go in and showcase when customers start using the product, they start asking about more and more features. How can you use this? Can I use this? And the, uh, the, for example, the costing, pricing, all of those things which came in and there. And we as TAMs now, uh, present these to the customers and bring uh, keep them updated on what is coming up in the next release. Give them we have they are they are under NDA and then we keep them updated. So keep them uh, we keep them excited, right. not just excited, but then just for the use cases. How do how can they benefit or how can they uh, run op optimally, right? So in that way, we uh, the upgrades are fine. We uh, we get the, we give them these details and then we help them do the upgrade. Now. 
what has uh, what uh, the process uh, with these process what we have seen is over the last two three releases the customers have started doing by themselves now because it has become seamless they know it is it is simple now it is so easy if you follow these steps if you follow this step they are confident that even if they get stuck they can go back and then uh, look at the issues and then come back again so uh, that that is really an uh, amazing thing what we have seen within the tam customer so we ke we keep telling the tam customers and about these uh, steps and they follow this now that's the reason why i have even published this out right so not just for the tam customers for the community so this can be used by anyone right so and then if you follow these steps i can guarantee that uh, that's going to be an easy step and so every six months is not an issue for anyone now right it is interesting that you know that we all experience that right i, I experience it even these days we're using Streamyard, right and Streamyard adds new features and every once in a while a new feature comes up and once you get used to that it's very comfortable right so as long yes. as you get comfortable that it's not breaking things and then a new feature exactly. shows up and it doesn't break things then then you can you can move forward right and and you get used to it you get comfortable with it and pretty soon it becomes part of your operational expectation right and so yeah, yeah. and that's what you've done here too is you, once you get people trained on this is easy you can do it you can keep everything up to date uh you might be able to sleep better at night too knowing that you yeah. don't have security risks and you're up on the current stuff there is no better feeling than knowing you're current right exactly. as i get behind in my services I'm using, there's this little icky feeling that I go, oh, they're going to send me mail one day saying I have to upgrade now. And then it's going to be like this thing, emergency I'm going to have to deal with. So if you can keep things comfortably to the latest release, you get to take advantage of some features. You get to brag to people that you're there are new features that you're on top of with your organization. So yeah, I can get that. That makes me feel good. All right. All right, so your blog article, uh, getting back to it, again, thinkvirtuals.com, uh, and go check out uh, under the Cloud Management tab. You can't miss it. Uh, just scrolling through here, uh, you give you a nice, 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 important notes before upgrade, right? Um, gives you a nice bullet list of things that you should worry about before you upgrade, right? And there are some, you know, support for vCenter Server 6.0 has been dropped from vRealize Operations 8.3 onwards. So just kind of like those, you know, happy little things that in case you've been sitting, you know, out of release for a while, you can read these things and see what you should know. That's really nice. Let's see. Most definitely. I One of the things I absolutely love about uh, your blog, Varghese, is your additional resources uh, that you put at each one of them. Um, it's really hard to find those in a centralized location. So yeah. that, that makes it uh, really easy um, for people to find those important notes. So I think that is awesome that you've added that. So from somebody in the community, thank you for doing that. Thank you. Thank also, you. shout out, you give us times on how long things should take. Time required, 15 minutes. Strongly recommend running the pre-upgrade assessment tool. So again, uh, a, a good shout out there. If you don't run the pre-upgrade assessment tool, what's going to go wrong? It could fail. It could fail. Uh, but again, if you have snapshot, you can come back. But then pre-upgrade assessment tool gives you very, very detailed information on are you are you all good with going with upgrade? Can something fail? All of those are detailed in, in there. So right. the, uh, that's that's the best way to go in. That should be the first step to do. Yeah, and I think there is probably, let's see, 10 steps here with some notes uh, on the phase one, which is running your pre-upgrade tool, uh, 15 minutes and the things that it's going to check for. So really nice there. Then you go into phase two, upgrading to VRELOPS, uh, VROPS 8.4, um, and you you know go from 7.x to 8.4, very clean easy to it's really like 20 steps here or 16 steps so nice uh question for you how long does it take you to write all this up uh as i've told you right so i've been working with the customers for uh, almost like two years on these upgrades so these had been there these had been there in the uh, uh in my document so i just uh for each versions if you see from 8.1 2 3 4 there have been not major changes in this step 
it has only been few updates which i have added in there and also the files and specific new steps but then yeah the the time it took was for the first block 8.1 and then the rest was basically an updates. But then I didn't want to overwrite A.1. So those someone who want to go into A.1, right? So so I kept it as it is and then added on to as separate, separate blocks. All right. I noticed that you have some uh, KB articles and you have a section for 7.8, and then you also have 8.8, .8, 8 to 8.x. So uh, nice double sections and then some KB articles down at the bottom, just as kind of like how to reset your password and how to reset admin password for the operations manager. So nice little things to have. Are these things that have gotten you in the past? How do you How do you figure out what to put in this stuff? Oh yeah, so these were these were lessons learned the hard way, right? So <laughs> these uh, the, those are the KB articles and the uh, uh, the steps which are uh, as the additional resources. So some of the cases where uh, uh, when you are upgrading from seven to eight, you need to make sure that the admin passwords are reset because you are changing the operating system. So that's something. And if you if you have the root password or admin password locked out, the admin uh, the upgrade can fail. So then what's next thing? You need to reset those, right? And those are, those have to be done at the appliance level, the OS level. So we don't uh, expect everyone to be Linux experts. So that's where we have these steps. So you, you if you get into this, just use these and then reset those and then start about with the upgrades. If I'm reading this blog and I'm stuck, how do I find you? You're like the invisible author here. Do you, do you even list yourself as an author on this guy? <laughs> Yep. At the end, you have, <laughs> that's me there, right? Wait, let me check. I'm looking, I'm scrolling. I said, we're, we're at the end. Share this on Twitter. Keep Where going do down. Put... Keep going all, down. <laughs> all the way, all the way. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Yep. View all post by buggeries. buggeries. Yes. Polish my. All right, there you go. It doesn't have your Twitter handle though. Oh Just yeah. All post. I don't know how to ask you a question. Like, I guess I can respond here. Do you actually yes. read your comments? Oh yes, we do get updates and uh, we do we do respond to that. But then yeah, that's a good thing. I will add my Twitter handle there for sure. <laughs> Nice, nice. Very complete blog. Uh, other question for you that's just, and I'll let Tony, if Tony have any questions, you can go for it. I mean, this is pretty straightforward, beautiful blog, beautiful series, very complete. Um, so you read your blog, you look at that. How much money are you making on the ads? I see you got some ads here. I can buy a pair of glasses and I can print PDF download. Are you getting wealthy on this thing? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's that's like my YouTube channel. Like I haven't. Uh, I would need a lot more volume to make like twelve cents. But uh, very nice, very clean blog. If I go back to the top of your blog here, um, you do have your other sections that are out there. The three hundred and sixty visibility uh, done by uh, one of your one of the guys here looks oh. kind of interesting. Why? What is a three hundred and sixty degree view? That that looks kind of interesting. And then not case uh, not use case for VROPS eight point one alert user assignment. Really nice clean articles that kind of take you through VRealize components. Yeah, that's that's written by my colleague Rahul Ramakrishnan. So he's a specialist on network insight. So so 360 degree view on like not just on the uh, what you get from VROPS, but also from the network side, from all the all the, the overall angle, right? And then how do you troubleshoot from looking at from the overall side, right? 360 degrees. Nice. Um, so I hate to ask you this, but like I, I notice you now have like a little cottage industry on V Realize Operations upgrade articles, right? You got eight one, eight two, eight three, eight four. Are you going to branch out and do you know you know anything out of your comfort zone, or is is we're going to be just watching your articles uh, number up to like twenty point six? <laughs> uh, you will get to see one sustainability dashboard, sustainability related uh, block coming in. That's basically I have built uh, a few sustainability dashboards on VROPS, which mm -hmm. is already there in this EMU blog post. But then I've uh, enhanced that and that I'm going to publish that as well. So there have been a lot of ask from the customers around that. Sustainability is a key thing now. So uh, that's something which I'm looking at uh, putting putting as another, another blog post here now. 
Now, will that end up under cloud management so that when the cloud management drops down, I'll get something besides vRealize operation? Uh, I, would, I would do it as under cloud management itself because that's, again, a part of that, right? So it's part right. of vRealize operation. Yeah, so it's going to get its own title there. So you're going to yep. have, like have a new article on the dropdown on cloud management, which will not just be vRealize operations upgrade. Sweet. Exactly. You're growing. You're growing. That's nice. I like it. I like it. Um, I know that uh, I want to also talk to you about the region you, you, that you work in, right? Because uh, you're you're out of Dubai, right? So uh, first off, we always ask, how's, how's things coming from a pandemic perspective? I know I saw maybe six months ago, Dubai all shut down. Every, all the traffic was off. Everybody was sequestered in their tall buildings. How's that going in the region now? I would say we have uh, we have come out strong. I'm not saying that everything is gone, but still uh, business is on now. So uh, it's business as almost as usual. We we are, we go with the COVID, uh, pandemic protocols, all of those things. But then, yeah, yeah, business is on, and uh, we we have like at least sixty to seventy percent are vaccinated already. I've got my two doses of Pfizer wow. already. So wow. yeah, so so we are on to that. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's 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 pretty uh, impressive here. Now the flights are coming in, uh, travels are on, uh, still with restrictions. You know uh, the travel restrictions, but still, yeah, I think uh, we are we are getting there. And climbing out Dubai is good. Yeah, right. Dubai is going to host the Expo 2020, which was supposed to happen last year. Now that's going to happen in October, so we are gearing towards that. Nice, nice. And how about the region in general? Because I mean, you're in the kind of Middle East, and you were talking about the number of countries that before we started recording that are in in the Middle East. How is the region doing? And give us some sense of what this region actually looks like. I know I've been getting more and more followers for the region, right? I mean, we have always been strong in Europe. We've always had U.S. and and Emiras, and and now the Middle East itself is actually really, you know, probably. 20, 40, 40% of my traffic now comes out of out of your region. What does that look like? Oh, okay. So Middle East, as you call, is basically like, uh, for, for example, our office, which covers the Metna, Middle East, Turkey, and North Africa. So when it comes to Middle East, it's basically UAE, the Gulf countries, UAE, uh, Oman, uh, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. That That's that's mostly the Gulf countries. And uh yeah, it's it's basically uh, it's all uh, similar things here. But then UAE, it's a bit uh, unique in the sense that uh, the ninety percent of the population here are expats, ninety percent. So and uh, I think Dubai hosts right. Uh, we have people come from uh, almost two hundred countries, expats from two hundred countries live here. So in that way, it's really unique, and probably that's the reason why you get so much of followers from here, right? You get people from everywhere. Uh, from every every like industry in the region. Okay. Yeah. yeah yep interesting uh, yeah that, that's interesting do you have your accounts in a specific country or do you end up on multiple countries and do you travel or do you just do everything online we used to travel because uh, for us uh for, i have customer in doha muscat and then dubai so dubai is basically i can uh, drive but then uh muscat i have to fly which is like 40 minutes flight, but then I have to fly. Uh, again, uh, Doha, It uh, again, another an hour, hour, hour's flight. So the, uh, we used to travel. Like I used to travel once in a week to Doha, once in a week to uh, Oman. So travel was always there. To, traveling to customers is always by flight. Uh, now it is no more the case. So yeah, the travels are restricted. And of because course. of the pandemic thing, yeah. Now it's all remote, but still, uh, as and when the travel starts, yeah, of course, the customers will definitely would like to try. So in the region, it's basically, it's not just like what you talk about the states in uh, uh, different states in US. We are talking about like uh, different countries within this region, and then we travel. And so we cover this whole big region, in fact. Right. When you travel to a customer site, just so that I understand, just to get, give our listeners a sense of what it, what it's like, you would go in and would you have access to the data center to do stuff or would you just be working with the customer on screens, uh, on-prem, or would you be having meetings just to discuss what was going to happen? What does what your job role look like when you go visit a customer? So it depends. It depends on the customer to customer. So prob uh, most of the, uh, as a TAM, as a technical account manager, I make sure that the customer have gets the maximum value of what they bought right so so it includes working with the operations team 
making keep keeping the uh, uh, stabilizing the thing run keep the runs uh, things running stable and then also getting them to use the product get the better out of the product so this includes sometimes working uh, on the uh, uh, with hands on onto the product like virtualize operation log inside and all uh, yeah but, but then otherwise most of the most of the time we work with um, operations team as well as the managers get them on uh, how, what are the plans they should be doing get up there get up to their plans and then take the technical deliverables out of that it initiatives and drive them through that so it varies uh, it's it's there is nothing that right. we say we don't do but then ultimate goal is to make sure that the customer is happy and then get the value out of what they bought of vmware and then when you're not working out of your house uh, do you have a field office in uh, dubai then that 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 you go go work with a team yeah we have an office we have a big office in fact a very big office now uh, uh, in dubai so but then uh, since we are working out of the customers so once in yeah. a day so five days a week we are mostly at the customers used to be now it's not the case but then yeah it used to be so five days a week we used to be there and then we go into the office only when there are some meetings specific meetings with which we need to go in there at all right right very nice very nice all right uh my final question tony any any questions you have uh for Vargas before uh, we sure so one thing that i've always wondered roughly how many uh customers do uh tim's uh interact with what's uh the size of uh or grouping of customers that you have are we talking you have five people or five customers that you deal with or is it um a larger number or smaller or? so uh for for us there are different levels of tams right so we used to have right so uh for us the lower level is tier one time that is one day per week for a customer so that is basically so i should I, I should be ideally having like five customers, so which is one day per week for a customer. That's how it works. But then it doesn't stop there. Sometimes it could be six, seven. It depends on how the the new customers come in or how the customers renew. For example, my customers, all my customers had been like five to six years with me, at least five to six years. So all had been renewing. So mm -hmm. I never had a new customer in my last five years, right? So, so that's that's how it is. Right, and that's important to highlight that. Customers actually pay a percentage of yeah. You know, that's you're a revenue generating uh, uh, person for VMware, and the customers are happy to allocate some budget to make sure you're you're around to support them. Because they they also get, see the value out of it, right? So, for example, just a simple thing, right? Virtualize operation when you deploy that, and when you show that you have so much of wastage in your environment, wastage resources. I have a customer who who reclaimed during last eight months. 81 terabytes of storage from his environment, 81 terabytes. It is not a small number, 81 terabytes, which was lying there for last two years from powered off VMs. Those VMs were like 2008 migration project VMs. Okay, so yes, right. So at 81 terabytes, it's not a, so that itself has paid for whatever they pay for our service. Right? It's just one example, but there are a lot of things going around that. Right. That makes it's sense. a win-win. It's a win-win for the customer. Customer pays for that, and he, they get the value out of that. Wonderful. I, I've always wondered how it worked, and so I figured I'd ask somebody in the know. Yep. Yeah. I always uh, get to, you know, community platform people asking me if I want to pay for a TAM or, you know, something like that. I always go, no, I can't afford it. There's, I'm a community guy. We have no budget, right? We, we can buy toys <laughs> and T-shirts, and that's about it. Yeah. should pay for real engineering resources or any kind of technical support um, but that's cool that is a that's cool so uh varghis varghis right am i saying that yes. right Say it one more time. yes you're right you're all right sweet um thanks for coming on the show and sharing we always ask uh, what is your plans for this next upcoming year do you guys get to go to vm world i hear there's going to be a vm world in asia this year um so maybe that's uh, in, in impacts you guys i don't know what's the what's your year look like what are you trying to accomplish we have learned that you're going to try to do the extra blog category so that's good any other thing and uh, how can community people help you guys in this region uh, the, uh, apart from any of those things, first thing what you what I'm looking at this year is travel out somewhere. <laughs> get get me travel out somewhere. Right. <laughs> get the flights out. Get out. Get out somewhere there. Right. Yeah. So uh, 
yeah so uh, basically it's uh, the, the values right uh, i'm i'm trying to get uh, how wear ops can be used for monitoring the tanzu platform like kubernetes platform that's a new thing which is coming in so that's something which we are building on working with the product team as well on how we can get that to the customer so, so that's that's something which i am looking at doing for the next year that then that, that's an important thing as well very nice very nice do you guys get to go to vm worlds uh, i had been uh, not all times go to, get to go uh, i had been part of the uh, tam tam events core committee so i had been i had traveled to i had been to uh, vm world last 6 years till uh, 2019 when it was <laughs> on site yeah. event yep right. so sure. otherwise yeah. not all times uh, don't won't get to go to vm world and- on the VExpert Pro side of the house, you are now a VExpert Pro. Uh, yes. Do you do you actually mentor uh, people that want to become bloggers, or you know, do you do you see yourself uh, looking to recruit additional VExperts and teaching them about the V community as a whole and how how to participate and how to get more out of your career by doing that? Oh yes, that's that's one of the pl- plans I have. I've been working. I have one more colleague who has been uh, uh, VExpert Pro in our region within our team itself. So uh, first thing what we wanted was to uh, enable enable even the internal people, right? We have our internal people on VExpert program and then uh, come into that, right? So that's the most important thing. And then each of those can go get to each, spread out the message to their customers with whom they are interacting. So that's something which we are doing. And we had been successful with that because uh, my team is about 19 people team. Uh, I'm part of that 19 member team. and. We are eight V experts now within that uh, in nineteen members, right? So this uh, we we grew from uh, two times to nineteen, but then V experts. Uh, I, I had been V expert for this is my third year, but then over these three years we had moved into like eight times now. So that's something which we are looking at. Similarly, we are uh, also helping the customers as well. My customers, I talked about that, and then get them onto the V expert. Why can't you apply and do these things right these are something which are contributing community they are doing something great and then why can't you contribute to that and help others as well right i think uh, helping others is a universal concept right that goes global right um, yep. mostly i love it because uh i'm always confused so i'm always looking for somebody to explain how to do it uh, so that uh, i can learn and your blog is exactly that right like i want to spend less time we had a, a really good good meeting with our cmo uh, this morning where we, they they explained to us it's 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 not about teaching us about the software features that kind of stuff it's just about teaching us how to get the job done so that we can do other stuff right like i don't really want to know all the details of every feature of every i just want to know enough to use it and accomplish my mission of running apps on my platforms and keeping them up and being able to go home on the weekend and do some barbecue right so uh yeah yep. that's that's what it's about so appreciate it all right Marguise, uh thanks a lot for coming on the show thanks for uh, be a, being a listener uh and uh you know we'll transition to question for you in that region when we're talking v barbecue here because we are on uh youtube.com slash v barbecue you can go check us out we live stream uh, every week so if you want to see what uh Varghis looks like or tony foster looks like or what i look like you can go check it out give us a like and a follow i think we have 480 followers now or some number like that if i get over a thousand i get a trophy no i don't get anything but uh uh Go give us a like and a follow anyway. Thank you making it to the end of the podcast. Uh, Varghese, what do you guys do barbecue in the Middle East? And if so, what do you eat? Oh, yeah. Anything like that. Right? So barbecue is... is it... Probably make ribs. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we go out for the so the desert thing, desert safari. And then there we barbecue is the common thing here, right? And then... Also, like uh, we we can drive drive down to the desert, drive out to the desert. We have big cars. We can drive down to the desert. Then we do the barbecues, right? So that's a common thing here. Very very common thing here. Interesting. Ah, nice. We'll have to look for a photo of a of a desert barbecue. Did not know such things existed. Oh right. yeah yeah yeah. Why that's a very go, very common. Why do you go to the desert to have a barbecue? That's that's land? an experience, right? Yeah, it's that yeah. that's an experience, right? <laughs> You sled down sand dunes. What is it? What is a desert barbecue? Is it is it or is it just dry areas? I'm just trying to envision what what does a desert barbecue look like. 
uh, yeah, it's it's basically like uh, dry. you get to the desert, dry place. The right. it's 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 safe there. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah, very interesting. Yeah, that's sweet. Cool. All right, uh, Tony Foster. Um, from my report, um, didn't do any heavy barbecue, but have been watching the British Bake Off show, the British Baking Show. If you haven't seen that on Netflix, go watch that. Oh my gosh, that's so much fun to just watch them baking all day. They challenge each other, kind of a contest thing. It's addictive. Be careful, or you'll next thing you know, you'll be binge watching baking shows for the content for the next five days. Uh, but they. They did uh, on the first season, I think episode seven, an Asian guy, I forget his name. He did uh, key lime pie and the judges were like, oh my God, key lime pie, best ever. And key lime pie, I, I'm from South Florida where you would do a barbecue over the summer and we'd always have key lime pie as a dessert for the barbecue. And so I did make a key lime pie, which I got to say, you can just get lime juice. You make a pie crust out of graham crackers. There's some great YouTube recipes out there you can follow. It only takes about to an hour to make it you have to leave it in the fridge overnight so it sets so it's a it's a it's a 24-hour experience to make it but then you just decorate it with whipped cream and little slices of lime on top and you grade lime uh the outside uh shavings so it gives it kind of like a light dusting of green with some whipped cream and the lime uh, pudding inside it's, it's fantastic gotta gotta love a key lime pie nice now if you'd put your uh, pie crust on the barbecue grill, I'd give you extra points. Yeah. I, uh, I, yeah the, the problem with the pie crust is that uh, it's a graham cracker, graham cracker crust, cu crust, and you can't get it out. You taking it out of the glass bowl destroys it. So I, the only thing you could have done is flipped it upside down and barbecued the whipped cream, right? We could have had like a crusted crusted, which on the bar on the baking show, they do take those little torches and you know, you, 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 bur you burn the top of it. So that gives it a little crispy look to it. So I guess I could have done that maybe next time. All right. With that, we're at the top of the hour. Thanks for listening. As always, we're going to be back next week. We got guests pinned up for the next two months. So thank you to Julia Klaus, who got all these guests lined up. Um, thank you to everybody that's come. Keep on blogging and do some barbecue. And we'll see you again next week. Be safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.